three, two, one. Hey guys, what's going on? James here, and today I am joined by the Twitter user BucksFootball underscore. You also may know him from his Instagram page, BucksFootball, which has over 16,000 followers. You also may know him from his podcast, the Cannon Fire Podcast as well. Um, Bucks Football, welcome to the welcome to the show. Thanks a lot, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Of course, man. No problem. Uh, if, if you guys definitely want to go follow him on Twitter, on Instagram, or check out his podcasts, the link to all those will be in the description below right at the top. So in today's video, um, man, we are going to be talking about Jameis Winston versus Marcus Mariota because, and this is pretty relevant in my mind when you say because national media, you know, Mar Marcus Mariota just had a playoff win over, um, you know, he had a, he did have that playoff win recently and he you know, a lot of people have been hyping him up lately, in at least in terms of the national media. And yes, he just played the New England Patriots and didn't win, but still, he's it's more so than what Jameis has done recently. So, Marcus Mariota is being hyped up pretty well right now, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, obviously, just like you said, uh, to be in the playoffs and to win in the playoffs, it, it certainly helps. Yeah. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, um, you know dot you know powerpoint dot by powerpoint dot and just really breaking it down of marks Mariota versus Jameis winston obviously both these guys are going to be very good quarterbacks in the future but you know we're just going to go more into the details and decide maybe not decide but just kind of analyze who's having the better career at least up to this point so in in terms of year three right now both marks Mariota and Jameis winston had a very um up and down year James Winston obviously didn't play a handful of games. However, he still finished with uh, 19 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and 3,500 passing yards, as well as four fumbles. Whereas Marcus Mariota, on the other hand, finished with 13 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, 3.2 thousand yards, and two fumbles. Um, so in terms of statistics right now, James Winston does have the upper hand. But again, there's always that that point of Marcus Mariota went to the playoffs first, and Jameis Winston did not, obviously. Um, so I guess like right now, in terms of statistics, yes, it would it would say that Jameis Winston probably does have the upper hand. But in terms of like intangibles and moving in the pocket, and I guess in terms of just overall offense, who do you think has the upper hand right now? I guess in terms of like supporting cast. Well, I mean, if, if you're talking about the weapons, um, like the, the wide receiver group, the tight end group, um, I would definitely give it to Jameis Winston. Uh, you know, you look at Tennessee, and um, they have Eric Decker. Uh, they have Delaney Walker, a very good tight end. But uh, to me, uh, you know, obviously Mike Evans is a top five receiver in football, and I think Deshaun Jackson is probably a top 15 receiver in football. Mm -hmm. um, so both those guys are very good. Um, and, you know, weapons-wise, I think it goes to Winston. But the thing that separates Mariota is Mariota has more of a running game than Winston does. Exactly. Uh, you know, DeMarco Murray, Derrick Henry, uh, those two guys, and especially Derrick Henry. I mean, he's basically carried them. He carried them that whole Kansas City game last week um, yeah. in the playoffs. And also, Marcus Mariota has a very good and young offensive line, and that's the way Tennessee's built it. So, yes, uh, you know, Tampa has the weapons, but Mariota has – the better trench play, I guess you could say. And mm -hmm. to me, I always say football is a team sport. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can compare certain players, but um, to me, you know, Mariota has the better offensive line. He has the better run support, and he has the better defense. Yeah, that's that's definitely true, especially in, in terms of this year, the Bucks. <laughs> we, we both know how the Bucks season went. It did not go well under uh, much circumstances. But like you said, uh it, you know they had a good running game. You have you have two starting quality running backs, and not only Demarco Murray but also in Derrick Henry. Um, do you feel if you put Jameis Winston in, uh, in if you if we let's say we swap teams, okay, you put Jameis Winston on the Tennessee Titans, you put Marcus Mariota in uh, Tampa Bay. Do you feel like um, Jameis Winston could lead them to the playoffs, or or do you think Marcus Mariota could have done better with the Bucks team that? he that we had this year or what's your opinion on that well i mean i'm not really sure how mariota would do because i mean it does help mariota he's a scrambling quarterback and the offensive line at times this year for the bucks was a bit shaky yeah uh, that would have definitely helped the bucks offensive line in terms of stats because mariota could potentially escape and turn some of them into runs 
Um, but, you know, the Jameis Winston and, and Tennessee, if you would swap them, I think they would be very good because Jameis Winston works best off of play action, and I think if you could really sell the run game, I think he'd be able to find the guys like Delaney Walker, Eric Decker, Rashard Matthews, uh, and, yeah. and Corey Davis. So, And I think... You know, countless times this year, the the Bucks defense ended up costing uh, the Bucks a win yeah. when Jameis Winston was starting. I think the Tennessee defense would eventually learn how to close that, those games out, and they'd have a bit more wins. Um, Mariota's stats, it'd be, they'd be a bit better, but I, I don't think they would be uh, a whole lot better because if you're talking pure quarterback play, I think Winston um, has the edge there in terms of uh, just – the the pocket presence isn't where it needs to be right now, mm-hmm. but what Winston has is he he threads the needle and that gets him in trouble sometimes, but it also puts his stats up. Mariota doesn't do that, so Mariota's stats would be a bit better because of the weapons, but also they wouldn't be. It's not like it'd be a huge difference. Yeah, because I mean, I I I do tend to agree with you a little bit, but also like. Um, like what you said, Mariota's a scrambling quarterback, and Jameis, you know, Jameis doesn't get a lot of credit for his scrambling ability as well. But obviously, the the at least the athletic differences between Jameis and Mariota are very apparent, you know. Um, and it's like what you said with those weapons, and you know that'd be I'm sure any quarterback would love having the weapons that the Bucks have at this point at least. But uh, with that bad offensive line, you know, I could definitely see him being able to, like, scramble around a lot more and making more plays, so to speak. And like what you said, James Winston, he he, need, he needs to know how to take a sack, essentially, and he needs to know how to, you know, not try and just force passes. You know, we, we saw a handful of times where he was just, he was getting taken down, he just chucks it straight up into the air, you know. I think there was one play, uh-huh. I believe it was against the Saints, where he threw it into quadruple coverage. Uh-huh. That was bad. <laughs> Uh-huh. So, you know, in, in terms of, let's talk now about, like, the coaching staff. Mike Malarkey versus Dirk Cutter, you know, positional coaches and stuff like that. Who do you think has the edge in terms of coaching staff, you know, molding them into a, uh, I guess you could say, I guess you could say an elite quarterback or at least getting them there? Who do you think's better at molding them, uh, Mike Malarkey or Dirk Cutter? Well, you know, when you bring that up, I think that is one of the things that are holding these two quarterbacks back. I, I think uh, coaching is a problem in each uh, team, uh, Tennessee and Tampa Bay. Um, I would probably have to go with Dirk Cutter because mm-hmm. Dirk Cutter, to me, has he's worked with Jameis uh, a year longer than Malarkey has worked with Mariota. Um, and I just think that Dirk Cutter... His offense is geared towards Jameis Winston. It's not geared towards a guy like Marcus Mariota to where it would be a bit more conservative. Maybe there would be more read options in there. So, I mean, Malarkey's offense, it's it, it, you know, it's kind of conservative. There's not many downfield shots um, because the Titans don't really have the personnel to do that. But if you, if you put both those coaches in front of me and said you have to choose one of these guys to, to lead your team for this season, I'd probably choose Dirk Cutter. Yeah. Um, it's really interesting because both, I'm not necessarily sure about the whole, um, Mike, Mark, Mike Malarkey situation, but at least in terms of the Buccaneers situation, you know, Dirk Cutter was brought in, basically one of the main reasons that Lovey Smith was canned was because they wanted to keep Dirk and they wanted to keep that, uh, continuation of the system with James Winston, you know, they thought that Dirk was going to be that quarterback whisperer type guy, you know, um, and it's... You know, it's it's very interesting. Um, do you think, like, the positional coaches also play a role in this, like offensive line coaches and whatnot, and, like, you know, uh, like water, like quarterback coaches as well? Like, do you think that they might play a role in this as well? Like the Well, I mean, I, especially with young quarterbacks, I think it does. Um, it, probably now, if, like, James Winston or Marcus Mariota would get a new quarterback coach, it probably wouldn't affect them much. But, you know, your first year or two, you're relying on the offensive coordinator and the quarterback's coach. Um, Mike Bajakian's the uh, Buccaneers quarterback's coach. He's done an okay job. Uh, he did a pretty good job Jameis's first year. Um, I honestly don't know who the Titans quarterback coach is, but yeah. um, Mike Bajakian, he's done okay. Um, I don't I don't really see a, a problem with Mike Bajakian. And, you know, that can factor in for sure, though. Mm-hmm. Um. And then obviously what a lot of people have been looking to lately 
is playoff pedigree. I'm, I'm obviously the the quarterback who goes to the playoffs more is usually more so than not going to be seen as the better quarterback, at least in the eyes of the casual fan. Um, you know, a lot of people would, if you really break down the stats, at least up to this point, obviously James Winston does have that edge. But the one thing that Marcus Mariota now has over James Winston is, um, you know, he he's been to a playoff game and he's won a playoff game, you know, and a, a lot of people are going to give a lot of points to Marcus Mariota for that. Um, do you think... And, you know, Marcus Mariota actually fared, in my opinion, I would say that he fared pretty well. Do you think if uh, if Jameis Winston does go to the pl uh, playoffs, be it next season um, or in the future, do you think he'll fare just as well as Mariota? Or, you know, in terms of, like, I guess, clutch traits and the ability to, you know, really play in the big games when it matters, who do you think has the edge in that regard? Well, I mean, I think you got to give it to Jameis Winston. I think you got to give it to Jameis Winston because that's one of the things he was known for in college. Everybody said coming out of college, you know, uh, the draft process, he was a winner. You know, he won the national championship. He he, he shined brightest when the lights were on. And um, that drive the in the last game versus the Saints, that two-minute drive right there is the reason why. Um He's pretty clutch, and I think, uh, you know, maybe a bit jitters, um, as everybody would have jitters their first ever playoff game. But um, I think he would definitely fare just fine. Mm -hmm. And um, um, my, I guess my final question in terms of this overall debate, you know, and, and obviously, like, we're, you know, this, we're trying to be as non-biased in this debate as possible. But like in terms of like, um, or this discussion, I wouldn't call it a debate, but um, the in terms of like characteristics and in terms of leadership. You know, Marcus Mariota is the more quiet type quarterback, um, really lets his actions speak for his words, you know, doesn't really um, try and go out there and try and be too um, loud and boisterous. Whereas James Winston, I feel, in terms of, you know, characteristics, these two are, are kind of almost exact opposites. Whereas James, you know, he's trying to do this stuff, he's trying to rile up his guys almost... Almost one could say in probably like a goofy, immature, like to a point where it could be seen as goofy and immature in terms of like leadership traits um, and, you know, really getting the guys riled up and getting the guys motivated. And w if they're losing, making sure that the guys are still playing their hardest, um, what's your opinion on both of them? Well, I, I mean, it, it, to me, it all depends on, on, on what you like the most. Um, if you like a guy, you know, the Bucks have a guy like that on their roster, uh, Gerald McCoy. Yeah. Um, you know, he doesn't – you never really see him do a, a pregame speech, and um, he doesn't really do that much. Uh, Levante Davis is another guy. Um, and then the opposite of McCoy is Winston. The opposite of David is Quan Alexander. Um, they're guys that are hype, hype guys, really, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But – to me, my preference, I would like a guy with that charisma that James Winston has. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, winning cures everything. So, I mean, I don't really care if you don't say a word um, to your teammates or whatever if you win each year um, and, and you perform well. So, but yeah, if I had to choose, I would take a guy like Jameis Winston. Although I do think that Jameis sometimes gets a bit too riled up. He kind of I think it. he, yeah, yeah, yeah he, 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 he yeah, he lets his emotions get the best of him sometimes. Um, and I think he, when he came after his injury, I think it, it was a good example of sometimes his, some biz, he had better starts to games. And I think the, one of the reasons was he kind of cooled himself down before games and tried not to get too hype. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's ultimately um, what happened and is he started playing a bit better. And um the week 17 game versus the Saints, he did a speech and he came out and it was a little flat. So I think that's important for Jameis. Uh, I'm not saying to stop the whole speech thing beforehand, but yeah. just chill out a bit. Um, I mean, I know you want to get the guys hype. You don't want to stand in a pregame huddle. Everybody's trying to get juiced up and stuff, and, and you're it's just talking. Silently. You know, yeah, like everybody looks to the quarterback, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's he's the number one leader in your organization. That's why you draft him number yeah. one overall. I mean, you know, like I said, former national champion, number one overall pick. He's, you know, he's he's a big deal around there, and people are going to listen to what he says. So that, that's important. But he's got to he's got to know when to when when is too much. That's what he's got to figure out. Yeah. Um. So, you know, final little thing here. This 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 you know obviously this will seem like a pretty obvious answer. We are you know we're both very Bucks related guys here. But, uh, um, you know, five years from now, you know, 
you have James Winston, you have Marks Mariota, you know, number one overall pick, James Winston, number two overall pick, Marks Mariota. I know it's going to be hard to tell them. They're both probably going to be in a good situation, but in five years from now, who do you think's five, even 10 years from now, five or 10 years from now, who do you think is going to have the, the better career? Is it, you think it's too early to tell? Cause I know a lot of people say like by year three, you know, that's when, that's when the quarterbacks really get their stuff. Like they get settled in, you know? Yeah, that happens a lot with quarterbacks. That happens a lot with a lot of different players. Um, year three is normally the year that they, um, uh, they, they come out and really start to play good. It happens with uh, wide receivers a lot, too. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, five years down the line, it's tough to say because I honestly think um, five years down the line, I think both of these teams are going to have new head coaches. Yeah, um, that's, that's almost th a positive at this point, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I think both of these teams are going to have new head coaches, and it's going to be tough to say because when you get a new head coach, the offensive system changes, and could it be for better? Yes. Could it be for worse? Yes. So it's going to be tough to say. Um, right now, though, with a talent that's on the Bucks team, I'm going to give the edge to Winston. Mm -hmm. Over over a span of five years, I'm going to give the edge to Winston. But, yeah, I mean, right now, if you're looking at it, Mariota has to have the edge as we stay right now but that's just because of the playoff experience because playoff pedigree you know and that's what you know you know it's it's always that rule of you know if a quarterback wins a super bowl he automatically becomes great you know and that's mm -hmm. that's not necessarily true you know trent dilfer won a super bowl <laughs> that's what that's the one everybody points you know if joe flacco can win a super bowl if rex grossman can play in the super bowl uh -huh. That's that's some that's some stuff right there. So um, Blake Bortles is in the AFC Championship Blake game Bortles right now. Blake Bortles is playing so. the Patriots in the AFC Championship. That's that's a thing, you know. Like it's it's a weird time, and you know, and when it comes down to it, I think both these guys are bottom line. You know, I think both these guys are gonna have productive careers, and it'll be obviously as Bucks fans, you know, our team right now is not in the best situation, and the more that the Titans. It, you know, if the Titans go farther in the playoffs or the Bucks don't go to the playoffs next year, obviously those comparisons are going to keep on coming up and national media is going to shift focus from Jameis Winston to Marcus Mariota, but that's really something that you just got to deal with, you know? Uh -huh. um, but I want to thank you so much, uh, you know, Bucks Football for joining me. Um, you guys can go check out his Twitter, his Instagram, and his uh, Cannon Fire podcast down in the links in the description below. Thank you so much for, for being with me, man. I really do appreciate it. No problem, man. Thanks for having me on yet again. No problem. And I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. Let us know what you think about the um, Jameis Winston versus Marcus Mariota conversation down in the comment section below. And as always, we will see you guys in the next video. But until then, goodbye for now, guys.